Man, I've, I've got a word I really believe for you today. I, I'm, I'm not going to drag this out because I really believe God's wanting to continue to keep doing, doing something big. Um, I became your pastor July the 20th of 2008. My life changed that day. See, you're looking at a man in front of you believed that a lot of things have, has died out. You're looking at a man in front of you that it's hard to speak on, but it, you, I just, how many of you know it's easy to go through the routine? See, I can fake you out this morning. I can con you. I can give you sweet words in your ear and make you leave this house, make you feel good, but inside, you're withering away. In 2008, July the 20th, my life changed and does still change, and hallelujah. It's still changing. See, I have truly seen the hand of God move. I have truly seen God, God's presence in this house, not because of me or not because of this praise band, but because we're seeking Him. We're finding Him. See, I have seen personally over 450 salvations and baptisms since 2008 here at this house. That's the most important thing. I have seen uh, sickness, disease, and cancer flee people's bodies. I, I, I've seen heart aneurysms go here at this house. Um, I've seen 72 people in Sunday school when I first became your pastor in 2008. And now we're seeing about 230 faithfully every Sunday morning. When I became your pastor, I've seen 160 active People in worship on a Sunday morning. Now we're seeing over 500 yeah. on a Sunday morning. Yeah. I've seen 28 people on a Sunday night, and now we're averaging over 170. 188 on Wednesday nights, and check this out. We had 397 last Wednesday night. See, I, I've, I've seen things. I have felt things. And I tell you this this morning to set the, the stage where I'm, I'm heading. I tell you all this because Elkhorn's a good house. Whether you believe that or not, it's not up for vote. And I don't really care what you think. Because here's the deal. It's a good house because people are being saved in this house. That's why it's a good house. Not because we're, we're averaging 500. It's because souls are still being saved in this house. That's why it's good soul. And that's why I can invest in good soil. So today I'm going to give you a word that I really believe that, that God put in my heart and in my spirit for me first. Because see, you've got to believe in what you preach. You may try to get on the internet and rob somebody else's sermon. Or you may try to get another manuscript or another word that through, uh, through my college and through all my schooling that I did. And you know what? That's easy to come up with a, a three-point average sermon that nobody gets saved and everybody leaves the same way they came in. But I'm looking for a visitation of the Holy Ghost. I'm looking for a visitation from God to touch me like never before. I don't want to be an old stinking average church. I don't want to just fill an old blue chair up and sing five or six little songs and have an invitation and go home. No, I come today to tell you a word straight from God. I'm here today to have some church in this house. How about you here today? How many of y'all here today to have some church in here today? How many of you came in expecting God to do something in this house today? How many of you want to see signs and wonders and miracles like we like they did back then? We can do that today. But you've got to want that. Is that's where in 2008, of July the 20th of 2008, that's where my life changed, Greg. I knew that I read in the Bible you could lay hands on people. And they'd get better. But I thought that was for Peter. And I read the Bible. I read the book. And I was faithful at church. But something started shifting in me. And today I'm going to give you my life story. I'm going to tell you what God has done in my life. And God has used you. As a stepping stone to get me where I'm at today. 
And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing me to be the pastor of the, one of the greatest churches in the world, the mighty, mighty Elkhorn Baptist Church. I want to thank you for allowing God to show up and to be here and to move the way he wants to move and to sing what he wants to sing and to dance when he wants to dance. And so today, I know the economy may look bad and may look down, but the stocks are up at Elkhorn. The stocks are up here at Elkhorn. People say all the time, I'm so sick of the world winning. I'm so sick. I, I'm, I know you may be a banker in here, and I praise God for bankers, and I praise God for hospitals and doctors, but I don't think that a hospital or a bank should ever outgrow the church of God. I think the churches should be building every single day of this world, of this life. I, I really do. And I you say, Brian, here we go again. Yep, here we go again. Because of what I'm investing in, no moth or no rust can get to. What I'm investing in, Tommy, no thief can break in and steal. Because I've got a deep treasure in me. I've been born again and delivered and set free. And I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. That's me. How about you this morning? <laughs> December the 11th, I, I preached a sermon here called The Power of a Godly Commitment. On December the 18th, I preached a sermon called The Power of a Godly Sacrifice. And today I'm going to preach on the power of a godly investment. Of a godly investment. If you have your Bible, I asked Daniel to read this during our, our tithing offering because I think a lot of people think we're doing God a favor by giving him a tenth. I think we think we're doing God a favor by coming to church and putting a check mark beside our name. I think we think that we're doing God a favor by singing the B-I-B-L-E. I think we, we've got it all backwards. I'm going to be honest with you this morning. This sermon, I hope and pray, gets in your spirit, but it's so true. Matthew chapter 6, if you're there, say amen. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 21. And I'm going to skip over to verse 33. It's good to hear the Bible. The pages of the Word of God turning. Sure, I feel the Lord. Mm. Matthew chapter 6, title of this sermon is The Power of a Godly Investment. Verse 19 says these words. I'm reading now the King James. It brings it out the way I want to deliver it today. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth. Listen to me. Lay not. That's what it says. God, it's written in red. Amen? Brian Keith Rafferty did not write this. Jesus Christ did. So if Jesus Christ wrote it, I think it's worth looking at. Listen to me. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth. Where moth and rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Verse 20, but lay up for yourself treasures, hallelujah, in heaven. Where neither moth or rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Verse 21, for where the treasure is, there will your heart be also. Verse 33, skip over to verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. How many of y'all believe that? Yeah. Boy, what a good word this morning. I'm going to give this to you. Here, listen to this. I don't have no points. But I just want to, I want to share my heart with you this morning. Psalms ch uh, chapter 90, verse 10 says these words. The days of our years are three score and ten. Psalms chapter 90, verse 10 says the days of our years are three score and ten. That's 70 years. Y'all listen to this preacher this morning. 70 years. Anything above 70 years is a bonus. It's a blessing. It's a gift from the Lord. If you're over the age of 70 in this house, can I drop some news in you? You are a blessed man and you are a blessed woman because the Word says the days of a man are three score and ten, 70 years. Now, I don't know how close you are, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Listen to this. What God is saying is we need to make wise investments with the time that we've got, Scott. We need to invest in things of eternity. That person sitting beside you right now is eternal. That billfold you got in your back pocket is flesh. Now I know pre preachers, they, they, they cower down when it comes to money. I'm not cowering down this morning. Because here's the deal. If you've got a dollar in your back pocket, you're rich. If you've got clothes on your back and a roof over your head and you drove into church in a vehicle, even if you had to get on a horse, he'd giddy up. You're blessed in this house. You're blessed in this house. Think about this. The Bible says, God says, 
Psalms 90 verse 10, the, man, the years of a man are three score and ten. Seventy years. See, you and I must make good investments. Listen to me. You and I must make good investments, good deposits. Because listen to me, one day there's going to be a withdrawal from this world. One day there's going to be a dying time. One day there's going to be a pastor stand over your grave and he will preach your funeral. Y'all listen to me this morning because I'm tired of people lying to you. You will die unless the rapture takes place. Your heart will stop. Some before 70. Some may live over 70. But one day your heart will stop. God says do not lay treasure here on earth. I know you've got to have a house. But watch this. Me and Daniel was driving down the highway. I guess it was Friday. And I, told, I looked over, I said, you like your car? And of course, Daniel was like, yeah, I like it, I love it. I want some more of it, you know, but anyway. <laughs> I had to, anyway. And I told her, I said, just think about this, Dana. One day, the car that you love, you like, and you want some more of it, is going to be in a junkyard. Now, I know we got some nice vehicles in here. But one day... You're going to be driving down the road, and you're going to see old Lucy over in the graveyard. I call it a graveyard. You're going to, it's going to have rust. It's going to have moth. The house that we live in, I love my home. I love that house up there. Thank y'all. But here's the deal. One day it will burn. Y'all, I want y'all to get this word in your spirit this morning. That seat that you're sitting in, it costs $45. Guess what? One day... It ain't going to be here. We know this here, but today I want it to go 16 inches from your mind to your heart. I want this word to get into your spirit. See, God says these words, don't lay up treasure here on earth, but lay up treasure in heaven. God says, listen to this, if you make me your treasure, I'll make you my peculiar treasure. (laughs) God says, if you make him your treasure, he'll make you his peculiar treasure. I think about in Acts chapter 3 where Peter and John saw the man laid at the gate of beautiful. He walked up and he says, you got any, any money on you? And I love Peter. He was a bold man. He said, silver or gold I have not. But what I have is called the Holy Ghost. And what I've got you can't buy. And what's in me is great. And get up and walk, hallelujah. See, he quit. Listen to this. Listen to this. This is going to make some of you mad. It's so true. The problem with America, we are paying people to sit still. Yeah, there ain't no party like the Holy Ghost party when you're preaching. It's the truth. Now, there's some people need it, and praise God, I'm glad we got it. But if you can get off your butt and work, go to work. If you can work, go to work. Go to work. Go to work. Somebody say, go to work. Go to work. That's it. Listen, it's the truth. Some of y'all, I don't, y'all don't like, turn me off. It's the truth. Peter and John, they looked down and they said, I don't have silver, I don't have gold, I don't have no money. All you need is Jesus. Amen. All we need, Elkhorn, is Jesus. I know that sounds like a vacation Bible school song, but it's so true. All we need is the presence of the Lord to drop in His house. All we need is an invitation of the Holy Spirit. All you need is to be filled with the Holy Ghost. All you need is the joy of God. Somebody help me preach in here. All you need is God in your life. You don't need no more money. Lord, God, have mercy. Help me, Lord, preach. See, you can work and work and work. And listen to this. And you can build and you can build and build and accumulate and accumulate and accumulate, but it'll never satisfy you. Y'all watch me. It will never satisfy you. I'm so full of turkey this morning. I believe it was Travis. This was funny. I was walking. Oh, it was Todd Sapp, I believe. Yeah. And Todd, he, I w- walked up to Todd, and Todd said, Preacher, I thought you was losing weight till you turned sideways. <laughs> that's good stuff, isn't it? That was, that's so good, I stole it off of him. We're so full of turkey. We're so blessed in this house. 
I don't want that to get in your spirit this morning. I know some of you are down. But my God, if you got up and you got air and breath in your lungs and you got two hands that you can put clothes on and you got food at your table, you ought to get up and say, God, I thank you this morning that you woke me up again. I thank you, Lord, that I'm alive and well. I thank you, Lord, that I'm saved and born again. I thank you, Lord. Somebody, if you ain't up, you're dead. I'm telling you, you need to get up and praise him this morning. I'm alive and I'm well and I'm blessed in this house. I am so blessed in this house. I'm so blessed in this house. Oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> this old world, it ain't going to satisfy you. You know why? Y'all watch me. I'll teach you a little bit this morning. You know why? Because you're a spirit. Watch this. I don't care what any preacher ever told you about Calvinism. I don't care what anybody ever told you. God made you for eternity. Let that word get in you. <clears throat> God made you for eternity. And the only thing that will satisfy you is not more money, but eternal things. See, there's a hole in your heart that can only be filled by the presence of God. There is a place in your life, no matter no drug can fill it, no sex, no alcohol, nothing can fill it but Jesus Christ. Nothing. And you can work and build and accumulate, have the biggest house, and drive a Cadillac Escalade and be the saddest person in this world. There's been rock stars who had thousands and millions of dollars and they find them dead. Money's not going to fill you because God has put a place in you that only his hand can touch. Only that the cross, hallelujah, can fit into. It's only by the blood that you're alive today. Amen. Look at this. Thank you, Jesus. Haggai chapter 1. I know this is an Old Testament verse. But this, this verse blessed me, Greg, when I read this. I read it to Greg earlier today. And he said, boy, I had to preach. Haggai chapter 1, verse 5 through 7. I want to read this to you. It says, now therefore, you can write it down, go, go home and do a Bible study today. Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Consider your ways. Consider your ways. Can't turn to your neighbor and say, consider your ways. <laughs> Listen to this. Consider, the Lord of hosts says, consider your ways. Listen to this. You have sown much, but bring little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with a drink. You clothe you, but there is not none warm. He that earnest wages, earnest wages, and put into a bag with hose. He says you, you work and work and work and work. It's like you put money into a bag with a hole in it. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. I really felt in my heart the Lord impressed on me to tell you this morning, whatever you're living for today, whether it be a car, a house, Clothes, material things, popularity, heaven will outlast it. Heaven will outlast it. God will outlast it. The Bible says the wages that we earn today is like putting it into a bag with a hole in it. And I thought about how one time in my life, how I was consumed with, with popularity and being, a, being the best pastor going. I still want to be the best pastor going, but here's the deal. I'm Brian Keith Rafferty. This is who God made me to be. I can't be nobody else but me. When I try to be something that I'm not, I fall back in a ditch every time. Here's what God spoke into my heart. He said, Brian, today I really believe there's going to be people that have worked and worked and worked and worked. And you, I'm glad you're working. I'm glad you got a job. We need a job. We got to get by. You got to pay your bills. Hallelujah. I understand that. But here's what God spoke into my heart. He said, it's like, Brian, people are working so hard. And they got, it's like they want a bag full of money. And all of a sudden they get a little money and... I, got, I, made, a, I made $100 today. And all your money's doing, if you're, if you're buying things in this world, listen to me. It's falling through a bag. It's not eternal. It's not going to last. 
Y'all get this this morning? It is not going to last. I've come by to tell you today that we as the Elkhorn Baptist Church need to invest in eternal things. Things that are going to last. I got some statistics I want to give you. Listen to this. 152 million people. Listen to this. 152 million people were expected to go shopping on Black Friday. Y'all knew I was going to go there. <laughs> Listen to this. This is going to blow your mind. 152 million people went shopping on Black Friday were expected to go. Money spent on Black Friday weekend. One day, Black Friday. Y'all listen to this. This is going to blow your mind this morning. It's crazy. In 2010, $45 billion were spent in one day on Black Friday. Listen to this. In 2011, $48.5 billion, Larry, was spent one day called Black Friday. Friday. This last Friday, $52.4 billion was spent one day on Black Friday. One day, $52.4 billion. And people get mad at me for trying to raise $152,000? But you know, I've never seen anybody stand up and say, My God. They spent a $52.4 billion on Black Friday. Watch this. I'm not backing down. I'm about eternal things. I'm going to build God's kingdom. It will last. It will last. It will last. And if the moth comes in, they can't have it. If a thief breaks in, they can't have my soul. Are you kidding me, Brian? $52.4 billion? I wish I was kidding you this morning. One day, you think if those people were to turn around and invest $52.4 billion back into the kingdom of God, hallelujah, can you imagine what it would happen in this world? You say, well, Brian, you're fussing at me. I'm not fussing at you. Here's why I get upset, though. Glad you asked. You'll spend $500 on one day and give God $10 on Sunday morning. Amen. That's right, brother. Come on. <laughs> hey, Lay, you're over there. You may have to edit this one. Reaching 40,000 people today. 40,000 people are listening. Now, they may not listen next week. But here's what I'll tell people who listen to the radio. You need to be spirit-filled. You need to be committed to God. You need to sacrifice in the Lord. And you need to have godly investments in your life. One that when the moth comes and the thief comes and the rust comes, it cannot take it away. Because what I've got in me is called a deep treasure. It's a deep treasure. Nobody can steal it. Listen to Paul in Philippians chapter 3. Verse 7 and 8. Now, I'm not going to read you the original Greek because y'all would probably, it'd be bad. It'd be bad if I read you the original Greek. Listen, Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 and 8. Paul says these words. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Those things I gained in the flesh, I really lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, listen to this. And I count all things but loss for the ex excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Listen to this. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Paul was bitten by a snake, shipwrecked three times. He was beaten. He had a thorn in his side. He, and when he died, he got sawn in two. But listen to what he said, Glenn. Listen to this. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, I do count them but dung. Shoo. Turn your neighbor and say, shoo. <laughs> Y'all are great. That I may, watch what he says, that I may win Christ. That I may win his anointing. That I may win the favor of God. Everything that I have done in my life down here outside of Jesus is manure. It's dung. That's what it, that's what it says, right? Y'all got that right? 
He says, everything I've done outside of Jesus is manure. Now, I won't tell you the original text what it says. Because it's a bad. But Paul was bold enough. He said, everything I've done in my life outside of Jesus, he said, it smells like manure. It's manure. It's dung. And I started thinking about that. See, we act like we're going to live forever here. We act like that. But we're really not. God said these words. I want this to get in your spirit. Praise Him, y'all come. God said, if you put me first, listen to what He says, Jamie. This is a good word. He says, I will bless you in your waking up and your lying down. No nation will be able to come against you. I'll make you the head and not the tail. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. I will set you in a high place. I will overtake you. I will bless you and your fields. If the enemy comes against you, listen to what he says. The enemy will have to flee seven different directions. Seven different directions. He says, I will open my good treasure to you. And I will pour out my blessings. Listen to what he says. Well, you can't even contain it. We serve a God if you'll invest in the, in the godly treasure, the, guard, the godly harvest, the godly investments. He says, Jimmy, I know it don't make sense when the economy is busted. I know it don't make sense when, you're, when your family's upside down. He says, but if you put me first, I'll bless you going in and I'll bless you coming out. I'll make you plentiness in your life. I'll bless you so much. You won't even be able to contain it in your body. That's the kind of God I serve. How about you? That's the kind of God I serve in my life. He ain't going to hang me up and leave me out to dry. He didn't get us to this point to say, oh, I'm satisfied with 500. I hear this all the time from people. Well, I don't want a big church. We won't be able to meet and greet. Oh, yes, we will. You would have a hard time when God saved 3,000 people one day. And that was called the Church of Jerusalem. You would have a really hard time at the Church of Jerusalem because that wasn't good enough for God. He saved 5,000 the next day. The first church had 8,000 members. And the Bible says that heaven is going to have a number that nobody can number. There's going to be so many people in heaven, you can't even count that high. I praise His name this morning. I give Him glory this morning because He's unstoppable this morning. Amen? He's unstoppable this morning. Listen to this. Last time I checked, He's still God. Last time I read my Bible, he's still on the throne. Last time I checked, he's still, he's still in the saving business and still in the, the saving and knowledge and business of Jesus Christ. God loves us. Listen to me. God loves you. He, God wants to bless you. The only time in the Bible God says, will a man rob me? That hurt my feelings when he said that. Because I've been a thief. I have. I've robbed God. And you know what God did to me? I missed my blessing. I missed my blessing. And now to the point, Sarah, I can't outgive him. I'm being honest when I say this. I'm like, I'm looking down all the time. Can we go more? Can we do more? Can we? She said, Brian, settle down. We'll do more. But right now we only got like $200 in our checking account. I said, give it to God. Give it to God. See, you know on every tombstone you have a name. There's a name on every tombstone. You have a birth date. Excuse you. You have a dash. And you have a death date. That dash represents your life. Three score and ten, 70 years. In youth, you know what? About six years ago, I stood over five teenagers in a casket. Death does not come with an age like we think it does. If you act crazy and do crazy and smoke crazy, and you're going to die crazy. What I'm trying to tell you this morning is this. I want to go out with a shout. I feel something birthing here at Elkhorn for a long time in my heart. I have. I still feel something birthing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ here at this church right now. 
God loves Elkhorn Baptist Church. God has showed Elkhorn Baptist Church favor year after year after year. He's not let us down. He's come through every single time for this wonderful church. And all the people who, who stayed through it, who got through it, I want to say thank you this morning. The question is this, what are you doing with your dash? Brian, I'm working and working and working and working and working and working, depressed and anxiety. How's that working for you? Brian, I can't make it. Watch this. I felt this. I felt the Lord speak. It's in my heart just now. You start tithing. Listen to me. Don't y'all get mad because you talk about money in the church. He was like, that's all. I hear this all the time. That's all Brother Brian talks about. Oh, really? Well, evidently, it's working. 450 plus souls that got saved. Maybe they want to tithe. You know? You tithe. You give God your best, not your leftovers. And if God don't do what God said he would do, I'll pay you personally back every penny out of my own pocket. Now, I may have to get another job. But if God, no, I won't have, I won't Willa. Who said that? Tommy said that. That's right. You know why? Because my God's not a liar. What God says, he'll do. Hallelujah. God says, I'll bless you so much, you can't even contain it. Amen. And that's what God, right now, God's listening to him. Billy Graham said this word. He said, Gina, he said, I've got all kinds of answered prayers in heaven, but nobody's coming and getting them. There was a man who died and went to heaven. He got to heaven, and everybody else had a mansion. And all he had was a shack. He said, God, I want my mansion. God says, you didn't send no lumber up. <laughs> Tom liked it. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Y'all send any lumber up? Are you going to stand before the Lord one day and say, God, I wish I could have, should have? I'm sitting telling you today that the urgency in my spirit it's the urgency in my spirit. Time is running out. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the time to give God praise, honor, and glory. Now is the time to give God all that you've got. Don't die and stand before the Lord and say, Oh, I wish I could have. I just wonder how many of y'all are working, 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 but you got a hole in your back. Got a hole in your bag. Three score and ten. Aaron, put Matthew chapter six back up there on this big screen. I want y'all stand to your feet. This may not have been a hoorah. Sometimes you just got to preach and teach the word of God. Matthew chapter six, verse 19 says these words. Praise him. I want y'all to look up there too. Lay not. Y'all listen to this, Pastor. You listen to this word of God this morning. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doeth corrupt. Some translation says it does corrupt because it does. And where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doeth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Verse 21, this is the key. For where your treasure is, there your heart be also. I can't afford to give to God. You can't afford not to give to God. I, I think about this every Sunday when I walk off this platform and I walk out them doors. What if this was my last sermon? Billy Ray, you got one of the most beautiful prayers, the prettiest prayers I've ever heard in my life. I love when you say these words, Lord, when I go into my room and I close the door for the last time, and I pray that prayer, my last prayer, my last sermon will be preached. I don't want y'all to look at me and say, oh, Brian was all right. I want y'all to be able to look at me and say one thing about that young man. I'm calling myself young. Y'all ain't. 
is he loved God. He loved the Lord. And I love God. I love you. I'll testify to you this morning. I love Jesus Christ more than anything in this world. I'm not laying up treasures on earth no more. The treasure that I want to give to the Lord is all this youth group. If you're lost and dying and going to hell, you're working for the wrong treasure. Because <laughs> one day, whether you're young or whether you're seasoned in your life, your heart will stop. Brandy, you know where you're going? Where are you going? Without a shadow of a doubt, if your heart were to stop. And I had to call an ambulance in here, and I stood over your casket. I'm, you're going to heaven. Mark? Debbie? Heather? Jeremy? Tommy Hughes? You going to heaven? Billy Ray Sharkett, you going to heaven? Donnie Bird, you going to heaven? Donnie Wayne Bird, you going to heaven? Got a lot of birds in this house this morning. That's the most important treasure that you ever have in your life. Is that person standing beside you right now, breathing God's air? That's a treasure. Won't you turn to your neighbor real quick and say, You're a treasure. Come on, I feel that in my spirit. Come on. Bobby Jean Walker, you are a treasure. Woo, a treasure. Carolyn Durham is a treasure unto the Lord. Yesterday is history. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. But today is a gift. That's why they call it the present. That's good. That's good. That's real good. Yesterday is history. Can't do nothing about it. Tomorrow is a mystery. Don't know what's going to happen. I just know who's got it. Hallelujah. But today is my gift. <laughs> my gift. That's why they call it the present. Some of you need to open your gift. Ah, you've been holding it for too long. Today, you need to say, God, I'm going to open my gift today. And I'm going to give it back to you. And God, whatever you want with it, you take it and double it, triple it in the name of Jesus. But I am a gift from the Lord. That's hard to say sometimes, isn't it? You look in the mirror and you're like, oh, God. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. Open it. Open it. Open it. Open the gift. Y'all got me? Say, I got you, preacher. Come on. Don't you die on me. Open the gift. Open the gift. In Jesus' name. This altar's open. And I don't know where you've been laying your treasure. But let me ask you, is a moth going to take over? Is rust going to get to it? 52.4 billion, billion, billion dollars on a Black Friday. Can I tell you, we're going to have a... Uh, a Hallelujah Sunday. We don't want no more Black Fridays. We just need a Hallelujah Sunday. That no matter what the world's given us, Hallelujah, we're going to make it. We're going to be all right. I got a deep treasure in me. I got the Lord in me. He's burning in me. He's got me from my head to my toe. I'm going to dance, but I'm not. So in Jesus' name, Where's your treasure? It's where your heart is. Some of you need to check your heart. And make sure you got the right treasure. People tell me all the time, say, Brian, you need to back off. The economy's bad. Watch this. This is not my economy. We serve 
I don't serve this economy. My God owns this economy. Hi, my name is Brian Rakeith Rafferty, and I approve this message. Hey, somebody praise him this morning. God owns this. Yeah. Questions this. Where's your treasure? It's where your heart is. Where's your heart right now? What are you doing with that dash? Where's your dash at right now? Is what you're worried about right now all that worth it? People worry about stuff that don't matter. What I'm worried about this morning is if you die, are you going to heaven or are you going to hell? That's what I'm concerned about. I ain't worried about where you live, what kind of clothes you wear. Just wear them. I had to preach. That's next Sunday. I love you guys. I am blessed. To be the pastor of this wonderful church. And I'm in it. I'm in it to win it. So this altar's open. Maybe you just need to come forward and say, you know what? I've been laying my treasure on things that the rust is going to get anyhow. People laughed at me. We tried to raise $89,000. And I told the leadership, I said, leadership, we're going to do it in one year. And in one year, over $90,000 came through this church. We paid off this whack. That's right. People laughed at me. We built the storage building, a 40 by 60 out here. It cost about $50,000. We paid cash for that. Cash for that. Then we paid off this building on a Sunday. And on a Monday, this house and 12 acres come available for sale. And all of a sudden, it costs $350,000. And right now, today, we owe $150,000. Right now. So my question is this. When I stand before the Lord and you stand before God, is he going to say, well done. You lived out your dash well. Or is he going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. So before we take up a Thanksgiving offering, and I tell you some better, I got good news for y'all today. You say, Brian, is that, well, you happy? I'm happy. If you're happy and you know it, say praise the Lord. This altar's open. I want you to check your heart. Because I'm believing today, people laugh at me, that's okay. I'm believing today that $100,000 is going to come through this church. I believe that. Y'all can laugh if you want to. Go on. Do it. Oh, watch this. This is good. Because y'all are faithful. Because you're faithful. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're faithful. Because of your tithes and offerings and things that you've been given to God. This morning, today, right now, I hold a check in my hand from Elkhorn Baptist Church for $30,000. I'll tell you all that. $30,000. $30,000. And watch this. It's not, <laughs> it's not going in here and going like this. No. It's going in a treasure box. $30,000 right there. $30,000 right there. Did y'all hear me? $30,000 $30, right there. Because of you. Thank you. Father God, in Jesus' name. 
Lord, just keep doing what you're doing. Keep working like you're working. God, we're here about a godly investment. Treasure, dear God, that's going to last forever. And God, the reason why we can write a $30,000 check is because we know that represents a soul. Hallelujah. It represents a soul. It represents a soul, God. Use that $30,000, God, to lead people closer to you. Bless us, oh Lord, bless us indeed. Enlarge our territory, give us more opportunity. Lord, keep your hand upon us. And Lord, keep us from evil. Bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen.